We are the United States of America. And there's nothing, nothing we can't do if we do it together. So thank you. God bless you all. And may God protect our troops. Mr. President, Mr. President, your reaction to the Darlene of AP. Darlene AP? Yes, thank you. What is your reaction to Governor Cuomo's uh, his announcement that he's stepping down? You called on him to resign. Did you think he would? I respect the governor's decision, and uh, I, uh, I respect the decision he made. Mr. President, Mr. President, Mr. President, how concerned are you right now about children in schools, given the 94 percent of children, many of them unable to get vaccinated because they're too young, have now tested positive? What are your concerns, and how concerned are you that schools will not be able to stay open as you've asked for? My concerns are deep, and uh, I'm very concerned. And uh, we all know why. Look, I understand that there are millions of people who have decided, adults, who have decided not to get vaccinated. And I understand that to badger those folks is not likely to get them to move and get vaccinated. But I also understand that the reason children are becoming infected is because in most cases they live in low vaccination rate states and communities and they're getting it from unvaccinated adults that's what's happening and so my plea is that for those who are not vaccinated think about it god willing the FDA is going to be coming out in a reasonable time frame to say this vaccine is totally safe. We've seen millions of doses around the world, a billion doses already, and we know how it's transmitted. And one of the things that I find a little disingenuous, when I suggest that people in zones where there is a high risk, wear the mask like you all are doing, I'm told the government should get out of the way and not do that. They don't have the authority to do that. And I find it interesting that some of the very people who are saying that, who are hold government positions, are people who are threatening that if a school teacher asks a student if they've been vaccinated, or if a principal says that everyone in my school should wear a mask or the school board votes for it, that governor will nullify that. That governor has the authority to say you can't do that. I find that totally counterintuitive and, quite frankly, disingenuous. Do you have presidential powers to intervene in states like Texas and Florida where they are banning mask mandates? I, I, I don't believe that I do thus far. We're checking that. We, but there are a federal workforce I can. And uh, I think that people should understand, seeing little kids, I mean, four or five, six years old, in hospitals on ventilators, and some of them passing, not many, but some of them passing, it's almost, I mean, it's, it's just, well, I should not characterize beyond that. On, on Andrew Mr. Cuomo, Mr. his Mr. resignation, Mr. what impact is the head of the party, what impact does his resignation have on the Democratic Party? I think the impact is all on Andrew Cuomo and his decision to make that judgment. I respect his decision. In just the last few days, multiple cities in Afghanistan have fallen to the Taliban. There's irrefutable evidence that a vast majority of those Afghan forces cannot hold ground there. Has your current plan to withdraw U.S. troops changed at all? No. Look, we spent over a trillion dollars, over 20 years. We trained and equipped with modern equipment over 300,000 Afghan forces. And Afghan leaders have to come together. We lost thousands, lost death and injury, thousands of American personnel. They've got to fight for themselves, fight for their nation. The United States, 
I'll insist we continue to keep the commitments we made of providing close air support, making sure that their Air Force functions and is operable, res resupplying their forces with food and equipment, and paying all their salaries. But they've got to want to fight. They have outnumbered the Taliban, and I'm getting daily briefings. I think there is still a possibility you have a, a significant new Secretary of Defense, our equivalent of the Secretary of Defense in Afghanistan, Bushmoa Khan, is a serious fighter. I think they're beginning to realize they've got to come together politically at the top. And uh, but we're going to continue to keep our commitment. But I do not regret my decision. <laughs> this slide. Yes, ma'am. Mr. President, um, on the issue of the infrastructure bill and the work that you have ahead of you now, are you concerned that you um, are you confident that you have the support of all the Democrats on board to get this three point five trillion dollar package through? I keep asking you. That. I know you're here. My mother said, "God love you, dear." Um, look. I have, uh, as I said, and I'm, I'm not referring to you in particular, just overall. I was going over some of the quotes uh, from the moment that I got elected, how my plan was dead. It's the exact same plan I ran on. We'll see. I continue to be an optimist. As I told you, I was once referred to by a doc as a congenital optimist. I think that we can get a significant portion of the, if not all, of the reconciliation bill, the budget that they're, they're having to vote on now. I think over the next month, which is the way it's going to work, they vote on all these amendments, and then they get to the business of seeing how they can make it work and then come back. I know you understand this well, but the public wonders what we're talking about sometimes, and decide exactly what's in that reconciliation bill and how much is going to be spent. I think we will get enough Democrats to vote for it. And I think that the House will eventually put two bills on my desk, one on infrastructure and one on reconciliation. Thank you. Can I ask you about Mr. President? Thank you so much, Mr. President. Um, I just sort of turning to Thank the Delta. You. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, I'm sorry. Turning to the Delta variant for a moment, um, I wanted to see if, in retrospect, you think your administration put enough mitigation measures in place early enough, and whether you should have perhaps heeded some of the lessons from other countries that had data as early as May and June about how the variant spread? No, we knew how the variant spread, and we know the vaccines prevent the spread. So <laughs> it's like, you know, a lot of countries didn't have the vaccines that I, we were able to put together to make sure every single American, we have over 300 million doses, 600 million doses of vaccine for Americans. And we've, when we've exported over half a billion, we will over half a billion. So we knew what is disappointing is that more people were not willing to take the vaccine. We've done everything in our power, well, I shouldn't say there's probably more. We, we will do more. But we continue to try to make the case to the American people who haven't taken the vaccine that it's in your interest, can save your life, and can fundamentally impact on the lives of your children or people you love. Now, one of the things that's happening, as bad as things have gotten, the death rate is 150th, or I don't, don't hold me the number, but significantly, significantly lower than when, the, when I inherited this job, inherited the job, when, when I inherited the, uh, the, the coronavirus pandemic when I first got elected. So the thing that I, 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 I continue to hope that people will overcome their fears, because their fears was based on, some are just as a political statement, but very few. I think most people are worried, and that's why I'm hoping that the FDA will say that we permanently approve of these vaccines. 
because we have enough for everyone. And I'm hoping that uh, as people realize, and it is picking up, vaccines are picking up, but not at the rate they were before. Remember, I was setting up, you know, uh, stadiums, sports stadiums, and we we're doing thousands of vaccines a day. And uh, I wish I could have thought of something beyond what we've thought of that make everybody want to get the vaccine, but that hadn't been the case. Now, at a federal level, what I'm going to be doing is more is making sure that they understand that I do have authority to say if you're going to come into this building, into a federal building, that you have to have been vaccinated or show that or be wearing a mask. And I think that um, I'm going to use, and I, I anticipate that it's probable that the Defense Department will, as they put in place all the mechanisms needed to be able to, in fact, in, impose or, or initiate a mandate for all regular forces and reserves to get vaccinated. But um, I continue to be hopeful. You see, I had a long talk, not long, I had a talk with Governor Asia, Hutch Asia Hutchison, who said he made a mistake. And he is working really hard going around. He told me that he's doing a lot of town meetings, not all of which are being embraced. But he's making the case. We're going to continue to make the case. If I may, ironically, one of the Democrats through the years that you spoke with about infrastructure the most was Andrew Cuomo, who is resigning, who announced he's resigning today. You had traveled New York with him when you were vice president to the launch of the reconstruction of LaGuardia. He was someone who supported your campaign early on. No, you call on him to resign. No, you condemned the alleged behavior. But you're someone who spends a lot of time with mayors and governors. How would you assess his 10 and a half years as governor of the state? In terms of his personal behavior or what he's done as a governor? What he's done as a governor. I thought he's done a hell of a job. I thought he's done a hell of a job. And, uh, I mean, both on everything from access to voting to infrastructure to a whole range of things. That's why it's so sad. Okay, your last question, right here. President, I have a question about the significance of the bipartisan nature of the infrastructure agreement. Are there lessons learned from that agreement that can be applied to uh, voting reform, police reform, or LGBTQ civil rights? By you guys or by me? By <laughs> anyone. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I shouldn't kid, because I was just reading about 50 statements from very serious press people about how I, oh, my whole plan was dead from the beginning. Look, um, the lesson learned is being willing to talk and listen. Listen. Call people in. Call people. No, no, let me finish. And I think the lesson learned is exposing people to other views. And so that's why, from the beginning, on all the subjects you raised, I've sat with people and listened to their positions, some in agreement with where I'm in, some in disagreement. And so I think it's a matter of listening. It's part of democracy. Thank you all so much. Sir, why have you not named an FDA commissioner? Mr. President, 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 would you like to see but can I quickly follow up on your, your comment on Governor Cuomo? Can you really say that he has done a quote hell of a job that he's accused of sexually harassing well, women? Look, you asked two different questions. Job? I asked the substantive, should he remain as governor, is one question. And you, women should be believed when they make accusations that are able to, on the face of them, make sense and investigate it. They're investigated, and the judgment was made that what they said was correct. That's one thing. The question is, did he do a good job on infrastructure? That was the question. He did. No, the question was, correct me if I'm wrong. Well, how was he as a governor general? Well, the governor general, he obviously. Outside of his personal behavior. Outside of his personal behavior. Okay. Can you separate the two? No, I'm not. I was asked a specific question. I'm trying to answer specifically. What do you want to ask me specifically? Well, I'd like to ask you about infrastructure as well. Given that you have said this is such an urgent bill that needs to be passed, why not have the House take it up immediately for a vote? <laughs> we'll get it done. 
I'll get both. Thank you. Mr. President, Mr. President, you'd like to see the FDA speed up approval of the coronavirus vaccine.